This podcast is not a substitute for a relationship with a mental health professional. Hello, everyone. Once again, it is a new episode of the Mental Health is a Lifestyle podcast with your girl, Andrea Wise Brown. I am so happy, guys. Well, not guys, family. Y'all are my family. So I am so excited, again, no lies, to be here with you again this week on this episode. So as you know, um, when we do these, um, the podcast, you already know Dr. Creator. You know we do our mailbags together. But now the podcast is moving into a different space where we're going to have some good, healthy, deep conversations, some candid conversations with some people who want to bring their truth. And so today we have with us our new addition to the family, Mr. Stephen James Dixon. Yay! Yeah. Oh, y'all, y'all <laughs> going to edit claps. that in later? <laughs> Y'all gonna edit that in, the claps and all that, and it's gonna be a whole audience and all. Yeah, that's gonna be cool. That's what I'm gonna have to do, Steve. I'm gonna have to do that. I, I gotta invest some more money for that. Uh, I appreciate you having me. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited for you to be here. Yeah. I really am. Okay, so before I could even say why, I was gonna say this. It's this is a long time coming when I didn't even know. God has some things, you know, you know, God has your life already planned for you, right? Mm-hmm. And um, I love that Bible verse and note family, y'all know I am not gonna sit up here and lie like I can tow the Bible verse, but I knew it with something like, um, he will make your crooked places straight, meaning that he's already down the road, you know, pulling everything together and making life real good for you, making it worthwhile. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Okay. And so I say that, but before I say that, let me properly introduce you. Okay. So, and some of you guys may already know who Stephen is. So Stephen James Dixon is a husband, a father, a relationship expert, and author of the book, Men Don't Heal, We Ho. I'm going to rewind that. (laughs) Okay. I need y'all to hear that again. Okay. He is the author of the book, Men Don't Heal, We Ho. Okay. Now, a book about the emotional instability of men. Stephen has been featured live on TV and radio across the country and as far away as Europe and Africa. So this right here, Stephen, is where the applause supposed to come in. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't even know where it comes in. <laughs> it comes in. It, the, it just always comes in. Go ahead. I know the editors be doing an amazing job. Okay. They, they know how to do all that kind of stuff. <laughs> yes. Okay, Stephen. So the name of that book. All right, so no, here we go. Let me just, let me give you uh, my little story, my little spiel as to why I said God makes your crooked places straight. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as I've been doing this podcast, um, and you guys know I'm a therapist, and so I have a private practice. Um, I'm also married for 27 years. I live with a man. I see men in my practice. I have God's sons that I've helped to raise. So those are other, and now they're men. Um, and my son that I helped to raise my stepson, who's my son that I helped to raise. So I have all these men. And right now, I don't know at this time in my life. And I, it's probably more about me and my transition, Mm. honestly, but I, there's been some things that have just been coming up about men, uh, men's issues, men's feelings that haven't been heard, uh, men's voices and, and men choosing not to use their voices because of the different fears that they have. And so this has just really been, it's been in my life. It's been showing up in my life all around me. So that for me is when I know that that's something that I really need to lean into, to tap into, because it presents an opportunity, not only for me to grow, Mm -hmm. but also for the listeners, the world to grow. Right. And so, um, 
I don't know. Um, after prayer one morning, I was thinking, I'm like, okay, who can I, what man can I talk to? Cause mm. I, my husband is not going to sit on this couch and talk to these. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to do that. That is just not who he is. And that that's okay. Got some wisdom. 27 years of marriage. You need to say, you got to make him, you got to trick him and no, record him no. on the low. <laughs> I'm not, time. I'm not Steven. Cause he may say something that I may not be proud. <laughs> yeah, the editing. <laughs> you got the editing again. You got to trust the editors. <laughs> you know, I want to go viral, but not for that reason. Okay. <laughs> so no. So I respect that. Right. But I'm thinking, okay, who could I have? And I promise you after prayer one morning, mm. the name of your book popped up in my head. Wow. Men don't heal. We hoe. I promise you. Okay. Okay. Why? Where'd this come from, Andrea? Like, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, where, but where this came from family is, and I think when I reached out to you on the email, I said to you, um, a good friend of mine, Dr. Guy, mm -hmm. Sanisha Guy, um, introduced me to you. I don't know. I don't know if it was 10 years ago, eight years ago. Right. Okay. So around that time, she had an internet, uh, mm -hmm. little radio show going and mm -hmm. I was her co-host. And so I met you at that time, but this is what's so interesting. Mm. Uh-huh. At the time that I met you, I don't think I really spoke a lot. Mm -hmm. I didn't really engage in the book and what the book. And then I think that I also probably had some judgments mm. Mm, on the statement, mm. you know, so I kind of stood back, but that's why I'm telling you timing is everything. You got me? Yeah. Because now in, in this season of my life, your book came up in my wow. head. So here we go. <laughs> yes. Yes. I remember Dr. Guy. Shout out Dr. Guy. Yeah. Good people. Oh, I love her. That's my mm -hmm. sister. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So now, are you ready? I reached out to you and I asked you, and I'm going to call you my brother. Will I Let's insult go, you by calling? Okay. Let's go. I reached out and I asked you if you would have a, con a candid conversation with me. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. And you say, yeah. And then wait, y'all. I'm going to tell y'all what else happened. So. I started doing some research and I wanted to buy the book. And then I saw that I couldn't buy the book online for some reason. Mm -hmm. But then what popped up was YouTube. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, oh, he has all the chapters. Mm -hmm. So I sat there day after day, 21 chapters, and I'm just really listening. But what's so interesting is I, my ears are different now when I'm listening. Mm -hmm. So I reach out to you. And I say, okay, I want to um, kind of give you some questions or just let you know, like, you know, what the direction is, where we going? Because right. I want you to feel supported and empowered when yeah. you come and prepare, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then your response to me, which was so dope, you said, well, oh, I sent you the questions and you responded and said, well, I'm, you may be surprised at my answers now because I'm different than I was 10 mm -hmm. years ago. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I said, I re responded to you and said, I am too. <laughs> <laughs> we are, hopefully, right? And that was my thing. I said, well, I hope so. Shoot, I'm different than I was five, six years ago. Yeah, 10 more years of marriage for me. Oh, here we go, y'all. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So we're going to start where we were, where mm -hmm. you were. Mm -hmm. Because I think that a lot of brothers out there yeah. are where you were. Yeah. Right. And then we're going to bring it up to where you are now, if you don't mind. Where where okay. I was at that time was I was trying to figure out how to be a good husband. Um, it was, I, I, I looked around, I said to myself, who would I model myself after as a husband? And I didn't have any good models. Um, my father was not in my life. When I was born, my father was in prison. I never met my father or been around him. I know who he is. I know where he is, you know, but I've never met him. Um, and I don't have a marriage that I wanted my marriage to model out after. So I really just had to ask myself one day, what would I be? Mm -hmm. How, what is a good husband? Mm -hmm. And I had to define it for myself and I had to set that bar high. Um, and so I had to look at how do I heal to get to a place where I could be proud of who I am. And at the same time, I had a young son and I was like, he's going to be able to see me at some point. And, and know and learn from me. And he's not going to just learn from what I say to him. Mm -hmm. He's going to learn from what he sees me say on YouTube or mm -hmm. podcasts or in my book and things like that. So I really wanted to be a great man, not just for my wife, but for my son, for my legacy, mm -hmm. for things of that nature. So I started really looking at like, what is a husband? Mm -hmm. What is a good man? Yeah. What is a great father? 
how do you do this marriage thing? Mm -hmm. how, do, how do you be successful with it? I, did, I didn't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. So I had to sit down and just, and just spent cycles just trying to, how would I, how would I do this better? Um, the, the subtitle book, a book about the emotional instability of men mm -hmm. was about just being humble and how can I learn? How can I heal? How can I grow? How can I not take my hurt and pain and put that off on the next person mm. that I will be with? And how can I just own it? And, and like, like the, the fancy word we say these days, unpack it, mm -hmm. you know, so therefore I can, you know, share it and, um, you know, use it just to save marriages. Wow. No, that's so dope. Mm. Right. But you know what? For me, Stephen, my thought is, is you aware of that now? Mm -hmm. But you, I'm, I'm assuming, I'm assuming the story I'm telling myself is mm. that you weren't really aware of that at the time. I wasn't aware of anything. Come on now. I, I was a, I was just a writer in terms of oh. not really a writer. Let me. Correct. No, no, you I were. Was, I was writing. You yeah. know, I wasn't a writer. I didn't, I was just like trying to figure out my emotions and my feelings and put them down on paper. Cause I, I, I'm a believer of that. I'm a believer of, you can tell yourself negative things all day long, Come on, you know, and the negative is going to always overpower the positive or what positive things you can say about yourself. And so I just believed in the practice of writing things down on paper so you can see them. Mm -hmm. And so I just started writing. I didn't start out like saying, Oh, I want to write a book. It was never that. It was, I want to figure out how to be a great husband. So I was like positives and negatives and if then elps loops. And what if I did this differently? What if I did this better? Bouncing it off my wife. You know, what can I do better? What can I do differently? How can, how can I get you to love me more? How can I love mm. you better? Things like that. And so I was just writing, writing and writing. And I actually enjoyed writing. Um, I needed that outlet because mm -hmm. I needed to be able to, to, to convey those deep, passionate things that I didn't have my homeboys that I wanted to share it with. When my, my, when my homeboys, we just talking about the game, we just talking about money, you know, stuff like that or whatever. We, I really wasn't in a position at that young age to say, hey, this is what's happening at home. This is what's hurting me. This is what I'm concerned about. What can I do? I, I, I didn't have a man that I wanted to go to and say, hey, how can I be a better husband? I wasn't ready to do that. So I would just write and write and write. And then it just kind of formulated into a book. Even the title came to me later. The title just came to me after looking at what I wrote and just rereading it and rewriting it. Cause I just went through those iterations. Like, it took me like maybe a year. Now I had a lot of discipline. Like I would write every day mm -hmm. at four o'clock, just four to whenever I got done every single day for like a year. And so, um, I learned so much through being honest with myself. That's key. That's mm -hmm. what editors got to highlight that. Just being honest okay, with myself. Okay. You want to highlight self, it. Okay. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, just about, <laughs> hey, man, you could be a better husband. Mm. But let me say this. So when I started off reading your book, video, audio, reading your book, mm -hmm. um, you started off talk, speaking about a marriage that you were in mm -hmm. at the time, right? And <clears throat> you were speaking about having all of these needs. Mm -hmm. And there was issues because you felt like your wife couldn't give you what she needed. Because I think she had... Um, she had her life's vision, mm -hmm. right, of going to medical school. Mm -hmm. And I even think I said you that you would even ask her, like specifically, yeah. you know, um, you know, like I need more attention or I need yeah. more affection or I need more sex. Those yes. were things that you would ask. Mm -hmm. But you felt like, I think you said, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you said that you felt like her what she needed for her was more important than your needs. Um, when two people come together, you definitely have to merge your needs. Mm. Like the Bible says two becomes one. And um, I thought that meant immediately merging. And that's why I wasn't ready for what, as we were merging, it was a slow process. She was in, she was in a med school. She's going through that process. So I'm kind of like in waiting mode for us to complete the merger um, as a new husband. And I was trying to figure out how do I merge my needs with her needs. And at the time as a new husband, I only need marriage, basically. I didn't have anything else. Like when she, we were newly married, she's in med school, so she's got a whole nother, basically life. You know, you got a PhD. You, it's a whole nother life that you live in. It, it's so time consuming. And so um, I was never a proponent of something being more important than the marriage, not at any given time. Like mm -hmm. I, if I'm married, I'm, this is what I do. Oh, like I'm, okay. I'm not 
doing something else and all these different things. Are you just, a, are you an all in or nothing personality? I'm I'm a or all. Heck, in, were you? I am a prioritizing marriage personality. Okay. So it's okay. not an all or nothing. It's just okay. marriage comes first. Mm. So even when you call and say, "Hey, Stephen, you want to do an interview?" I check with the wife first. I don't mm-hmm. check with you first. You know, mm-hmm. I don't confirm or whatever. Hey, honey, what are you doing on Saturday mm-hmm. from this time to this time? So then wife says, okay, I'm free. Okay, now what are the kids doing? You know, do I have to do anything with the kids? Mm-hmm. You know, and then after that, I can do whatever I need to do. Nothing is in competition with marriage. Mm-hmm. That's what I derived and, and, and created when I was writing. Like, I was competing with marriage too much. Like, my wife wanted to do this. My homeboy wanted to do that. Early on in marriage, in my first marriage, that was competition for me. I didn't know how to how to prioritize that because I'm an I'm a alpha. I'm in the fraternity. When you're an alpha and you're in a fraternity, the fraternity is important. You can tell your girlfriend, hey, girl, no, nah, we ain't doing I'm going with my frat. No, we can't dance right now. I need to scroll around the party. I need to hop around. I can't dance with you right now. I got to hop all night, and I'm going to see you after the party. You know, so you prioritize, you prioritize the fraternity. So then when you get graduate from college, you get married, you're still learning how to prioritize marriage, and I wasn't good at that early on. And then once I switched that flip to say, okay, marriage is most important, I got a partner who's saying, well, marriage is on the back burner while I finish med school. Oh, that but was it, difficult too. No, I, I get that. That sounds difficult. But how did you even know that marriage should be the priority? Like what? Because you said you didn't have a role model, right? right? But I'm wondering what was that that made you say marriage was a priority? Because some men try to juggle both right. forever, right? I'm it's a, not that clear. It's not. Um, God blessed me with a love for the institution of marriage. Okay. It's just... I love it. I don't really understand it either. Um, I got married the day after I graduated from college. I wanted to get married. I wanted to be with one woman. Um, Collecting women was not an issue for me. I didn't see it as a challenge. I kind of grew out of that. We're going to go there next. We're going there soon. You want to go back to that? Okay, yeah. It wasn't wasn't a challenge. I could collect women all day. That was, I I got the gift of gab, right? Uh Make them laugh. You get the best tip to the men. Make them laugh. You got the girl. You win once you make them laugh, right? And so uh, that was never a challenge for me, but building a family, Uh um, having a marriage that sustains as long as you guys, 27 years, we're 18 years in October. Um, that was a challenge yeah. and that's why I wanted to grow my manhood. I wanted to be a great man. Mm. Like that was my, I had those type of challenges and goals for my life. I didn't know how to do it, but it was in my spirit. So mm. God just laid it on my spirit, laid it in my heart. And I was just following that path. How do I get there? Come on now, making them crooked places straight. Absolutely. Hey, no, that's good. Okay. All right. Okay. So now you, um, you graduate, you get married and now you're trying to figure out how to prioritize marriage you ask for what you need and you felt like okay wait a minute i'm not the priority here something's going on right so then y'all go to what we always tell you to do you yep. go to marriage counseling because that's supposed to fix everything right? everything everything <laughs> but there you go and it don't fix it well, not maybe, all the time. well maybe it fixed it for that moment for the moment um right? for me for us at the time my ex um we just we it was it wasn't fixing the marriage each individual person needed to be fixed that's right um Good. Uh, it, uh, we needed to learn how to balance and we probably didn't have the patience at least i didn't have the patience to balance things and give and compromise uh, up until that point in my life, I had never compromised before. Mm. I'm a man. I just get whatever I want, like whatever I want at all times. Mm-hmm. That's just what men do, right? Mm-hmm. And so um, immediately once you get married, husbands will tell you, I'm sure your husband will tell you, the woman just, they just swell up. They just get strong. Once the woman get married, she's like, I got them. Uh, she gets strong and she just puts you in a headlock. It. Oh, okay. I was about to Is go down true? the hole. I'm like, Absolutely. I'm like, y'all you, get stronger. Nope. No, you better speak mm-hmm. about your mm-hmm. story. Don't mm-hmm. come over here talking about that's what, I, that's what I tell all the men. I say, hey, whenever they get married, I say, hey, man, when y'all get married, she's going to get stronger. She's going to talk to you a little. It's going to be a little bit more bass in her tone. Mm. She's going to be a little bit more direct. Oh. <laughs> you know, that's what happens. And, okay. so, and so I just I just didn't manage that well. I hadn't been prepared for that. Uh-huh. Um, going into counseling, and I, I'm, a, I'm definitely a proponent of counseling yes. also. Mm-hmm. Um, I think many of us, if not all, need some form of counseling to talk and get those those things out that you're afraid to share. You need yes. to be in a closed environment where you feel safe, where you can share those things. Um, but I didn't have the patience. I'll just speak for I just did not have the patience for the work that it would have taken 
to save that marriage at that time. Cause that work would have been me basically sitting still and just waiting. Ooh, come on now. Just wait. Come on now. I wasn't good at it. Ooh, but it's so much power. I have no patience. Still. I still don't have much patience. <laughs> I still gotta pray for patience daily. <laughs> it's a daily prayer. Add me to your prayer list. Just whenever you think like, who can I pray for? Get your, get your man, okay, get your man, get your man some patience. Okay, my brother Steven. Okay, I'm gonna do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I got you. So it wasn't quick enough for you. Mm -mm. All right. Mm -mm. And then y'all decided to split. Yeah, uh, when it was 20, 20, got married, 23, got divorced, age 25. Mm. Um, college sweetheart, graduated from college, got married the next day. We really weren't real world marriage. We didn't even have anyone in our life to tell us, hey, y'all don't need to get married yet. Just be boyfriend, girlfriend in the real world and see how y'all like being together in the real world as man and woman. Um, we didn't get that advice. Mm. So we got married. We shouldn't have gotten married. We didn't know what we was doing. We moved to a new city. Um, where we only had each other and that didn't help really either because I needed another outlet. She was building a new life at medical school. I really didn't have that outlet. So I would just be running around, you know, either running around or waiting on her to like come home. And you know how it is when you're in getting that PhD, she's studying from six in the morning to 10 o'clock at night. Mm. She really had nothing to give to the marriage. Mm. And, and I remember at one point her specifically asking me, Hey, just wait until I'm done with med school and I'll make you happy to which I'm like, I'm not promised tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I can't just give you five years, wow. you know, and yeah. just wait. Like I, I couldn't do that. Some men maybe could do it. I don't know. I, I couldn't do it at the age of 23. I got you. That was young. Yeah, that was young. That was young. To make you that kind of commitment and sacrifice. No, that's so true. You know, the brain isn't fully developed until age 25. So you mm -hmm. were actually an adolescent. Yes, I was. Time. Yeah. So, okay. I get it. But then, okay, so I guess this is where the name of the book comes mm -hmm. to fruition, right? Absolutely. Because instead of leaving that situation, and I don't even know how you would even say, well, okay, well, let me work on me. Right. No, you said, let me move to Dallas and huff. Let me collect as many as I can. <laughs> let me just get back to collecting. <laughs> this is easier. It has no emotional tie, Ooh. just anything. Literally, like. I visited Dallas to interview for a job, met a couple women, and just it was just easy. And then the damage that I caused when I was running around hoeing, Ooh. it was it was I was so hurt because of my failure without knowing that that's what it was. Mm. Um, I was, like I said, just talking and collecting women just based on. And then I didn't care. Mm -hmm. So I was very aggressive. Oh, that's um, and, I, I, and again, exhibited a lack of patience. But I, I just, I started winning like that, actually. Okay. Whereas I was more direct, more aggressive, um, didn't give a lot of energy to emotional ties or things of that nature. I would basically just go from woman to woman to woman. Wait, hold on, Stephen. And you know what I, what I loved about your book is you, it was so candid. But you said... In that approach, they loved it. They loved it. You said they loved it. And, you know, women out here who uh, come to counseling or hit me up and you talk about relationships and the men and the dating that you're doing that is unhealthy when you don't think about yourself and your needs first. You're putting it out, giving everything to someone else who you don't even know. I just think that this is. I think it's so good for you to even talk about that because, you know, everybody is not of like mind. Mm -hmm. And so just because you see somebody and he likes you because you like him because of what he looks like, you know, you still have to look at more things than that, more of that than just uh, than that, the, that he likes you. Right. Right. And, and I loved how you said, um, oh, this was another thing that you said. You said it was so easy for you to of course, be aggressive and say exactly what you wanted. And the women were just coming and just pulling their panties off. It was one after the next. You didn't say that literally, but you did in another way. But then you said, um, you said something about the women, even though they knew mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm separated. I'm not fully divorced. Mm -hmm. Like that would just charge them up even more because for some reason they thought they was going to make you they man. Women. It's, it's, it's controversial. Um, because but women you tell will your never, truth. right? Yeah, women won't agree to it up, up front, mm. but women have a competitive spirit inside of them also. Mm -hmm. um, 
I have stories and stories for days where I would basically just pit women against them. I was one of those men that would just invite all the women I was dating out to the party, all of them. And then I would choose which one I would go home with at the end of the night. Um, and I would let, I would intentionally let women see me talking to other women, like intentionally. I would see, oh, hey girl, how you doing? And keep this conversation going over here with this woman as you're watching me, as you're getting upset. And now she's like, I want him. Why is he talking to her? They being competitive. I was doing it on purpose. Really? Why? All the time. But tell me why. It was working. It was easy. Um, Because then, wait, you could get both of them. I get both of them. It was really, uh, it wasn't just both. Don't, I limit, don't limit me to no, both. No, I don't. want you to tell yeah, a story. Yeah, it was yeah don't limit me to both. It, okay. it, you know, at any given time. It I was, got you. Or it was somebody else who was watching. It was a, it was a team. Yeah. I, 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 we would, mm. we would, it was just, it was crazy. You know, like it literally was, Um, I was just having fun. I, I was, you. I was just, I was trying to figure out how to heal mm. through hoeing and through meeting women mm. and not committing anything emotionally of myself to them. Um, being able to tell a woman, I remember telling a woman one time we were out on a date mm. and um, she said, well, I'm not dating anybody else. Are you? And I looked in her eye and I said, yes, I'm dating probably like six or seven other women. In fact, that. one is coming to town this weekend. And she was like, well, where is she going to stay? I said, she's staying with me. And she was like, oh, just like that. And I said, yeah, I just want you to know, you know? And so I would, Honesty was my always my best policy. I always kind of felt like too, like how are you gonna be a real player if you gotta lie? Mm, and so good. for me, I was like, I gotta tell the truth. And then I feel like a player. Then I feel like you can choose. Mm. You don't have to choose me. I'm telling you what I'm doing. I'm dating, I'm not trying to get in a relationship. I'm not trying to be in a commitment. And um my my wife now that I've been married to, she didn't take that. Oh. She presented herself differently. She okay, just come on. shut it down. And at that time in my life, she just happened to meet me at the right time where I was like, oh, I respect that woman. Mm. When she was just like, uh, no, I'm not going to do that. Play that game that you're playing with all these other women. You holler at me once you clean that mess up over there. Okay. And I was like, oh, I, I respect her. Oh. I always tell women that I married the woman that I respected. Mm. Okay. That leads me to something else that I saw, I heard, read mm. in your book mm -hmm. where you said, and and I'm gonna bring this up just because of the word respect. I thought that was interesting because um, on a, a podcast that I just just did, I think uh, last week, um, we talked about someone wrote in and they asked, "Do all men cheat?" Mm -hmm. That was the question, right? Mm -hmm. she, she wanted to know, "Do all men cheat?" And so, Doctor Creative and I, we gave her our perspective on that. But in your book, you mentioned you said. Men only cheat on women. You didn't say it just like this, but mm -hmm. you pretty much said that they don't respect. Mm -hmm. But then you said, or if they're not mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, how the hell do you get out of I that? Try, I you try to cover all of it. <laughs> <laughs> so you said that you wouldn't necessarily say that all men cheat or don't cheat or yeah. Tell me, go ahead. Tell, I would say, expand on I that. would say the majority of men have something that they've done that their wife would not be proud of. Mm. Um, and men are as faithful as their options. Um, wait a minute. You, those. you scare me with that. Okay. You're going to combine them. Okay. All yes. right. Cause you know, you, you know what I, what our friend Charlemagne, the guy says, mm. <laughs> yeah, what, real what, man on don't the, cheat. Yeah. You know, on, the, on, the, on the black, what is it, right. the Breakfast Club podcast? Uh -huh, uh -huh. What did he say? No, he said black men don't cheat. Right. Okay. A after he's cheated. After he, he, he's saying that. Okay. <laughs> you know? But okay, okay, okay. But take me into it. So you said, go ahead, repeat well, that, well, please. It, 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 it's, it's, it's more complicated than do men cheat because, uh, yeah, I'm once sorry. I wrote my book mm -hmm. um, and I traveled the country, I started working with people. So people would just reach out to me and say, hey, can you coach me and my wife? And you know, and I started doing seminars and I started doing more one on one stuff. I got involved even at my church and I was uh, a member of the life group and I had like, I don't know, 20 life groups or something that reported up to me and my wife. So I got to sit with mm. a lot of people. Yes. Um, and I learned that it wasn't just men cheat. Um, it was a lot that went into it. It wasn't just about sex. Mm. Right. So sometimes when you say, do all men cheat? A lot of people are really asking are men just sex crazed? Mm -hmm. mm. And it's different reasons that men cheat, right? And it's different reasons. And then it comes to what I've seen since I've been able to work with couples more is that 
that a lot of times, I, I can't say men had a good reason to cheat, mm -hmm. but I've seen wives who said, I don't want to have sex, mm -hmm. right? So where is that counted in? When I, I've talked to wives who are Christian sisters who just said, I don't want to have sex. Like I've lost my sexual desire mm -hmm. or my sexual desire cannot meet my husband's sexual desire. And they admit to it. They just come to me and say, well, what can I do about that? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how can we meet halfway? And so then when I kind of walk through how you meet halfway, the man is still looking at me like I have a desire that's not being met. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what to do with that desire. So it's not as simple as I just want more sex, right? It's, it's marriage is complicated. Marriage is tough. Mm -hmm. It is the most difficult thing that any of us will try to achieve. Right. right? Um, there's nothing else that can compares to it. Like I can get off the phone. My mama make me upset. Bye, mom, I'm gone. Or mm -hmm. my kids, I can send them to their room. My wife is going to be there every day. Mm -hmm. You know, when I left this morning, she was there. She's going to be there when I get back tonight. Mm -hmm. And so those things we have to work out. So if me and my wife are not on the same page or we're not liking each other, we have ups and downs, Dealing, teaching men how to deal with that up and down. Yes. Um, and women too, because there's a lot of women who cheat. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. Uh, 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 more and more I'm hearing from women who are not sexually satisfied at home either. Mm -hmm. But quite often, we don't ask that same question to women. And women would normally cheat for a different reason. They want the emotional con connection. Mm -hmm. They got the man that all they do is watch football all weekend long. Mm -hmm. Men, I got men now, hey, I'm from Thursday to Monday, I'm gone. Mm -hmm. You know, we got mm -hmm. men like that. And the women are like running around like, I don't have an emotional connection. And so they might, they, the women that cheat may not be looking for sex. They're looking for the emotional connection. Absolutely. The men that might be cheating might not just be looking for sex. They might look for just someone just to, 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 to show them that they're important. Mm -hmm. um, Make them feel affirmed yes. or validate them. Um, yeah, yeah. The struggle of a wife mm -hmm. that's a mother, how to prioritize the husband and the kids. Mm. Lots of women have trouble with that. Absolutely. It's a, it's a real thing. I don't even know. I don't even want to pitch it as a bad thing and say it's trouble because no, it it's life. It is. Right. It just is. It's not good. It's not bad. It just is. It's just life that mm -hmm. when you get home, when you get home from school, mm -hmm. you got a good dinner, you got to do homework, homework over here. By the time you actually get to being, I was just telling a person the other day, I'm probably not married until like about 930 at night. <laughs> what does that Meaning what that, that mean? meaning that I'm at practice with a kid till six o'clock, mm. then get home at six thirty is dinner mm -hmm. and with the family. Then at seven o'clock is homework, and then it's SAT prep, and then by the, then it's washing dishes and doing some. Okay, now I'm ready to be. Everything else is done. Mm -hmm. I get to be a husband now at nine thirty. Wow. She gets to be a wife now at nine thirty. Mm -hmm. But are we now? Do we have the energy now? No, y'all sleepy. Y'all about exactly. to go to sleep. Y'all got to go to work tomorrow. And, and do it all over again tomorrow. <laughs> and so and so then when you look at marriage, I'm like, okay, are you really married? And mm. so marriages are struggling like that also. When you get married, when you're dating, it's just you and the woman. Then you get married, it's just you and the woman. And y'all, kids come along, you're no longer really married. Mm. You're now a family. Mm -hmm. The marriage is kind of, and that's why you have to be intentional Very about good. dating that's right you have to be intentional mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. if not what when we my wife did was at least monthly we would get out of the house and go and get a, a hotel room mm. just to get because i found like we couldn't even date like go out on a date and come home we go out on a date come home and my wife just go put clothes in the washer like oh let me just get this and i'm like you're killing the whole vibe mm. you know what i'm saying i didn't took you out we didn't went to the show and went to dinner then you come home and you want to wash dishes before we go in the bedroom or wash clothes or sweep or mop. And I'm like, okay, you know what? We need to go all the way to a hotel mm. so you can have nothing on your mind but me. Oh, that's good. Right? That's nothing good. on your mind but me. Don't come in the house going, oh, let me take the dog out. Let me feed the fish. Let me get the cat, the monkey, the gorilla, the, the you know, forget the whole zoo of animals right. and after the chicken laid some eggs. Forget right. all of that, okay. you know, just me Ooh. the way it used to be. Okay. And so we lose that. Oh, that's so good. Pause, because I, I, you know what I think is important there? What you explained or described before you just said that, before you gave that example, was marriage. Yes. Because that, that is, every time you said that's not marriage, that's not, no, that is marriage, right? Mm -hmm. So marriage does look like now when the kids come, you know, they are also a high priority. I'm not saying that they are the priority, but mm -hmm. they are, especially if you want to be good parents, right? Right. And so that's because they are an investment too. So I get it, right? All of those things get in the way. And that is what marriage looks like. But this is what's so good is that I don't think a lot of men feel like they are like they, I think they lose the fact that 
that they're not getting the attention mm. that they desire. So the wife comes home and she's feeling like she has to do all of these things, right? Yeah. Just a part of being a wife, but right. a woman in a relationship, part of her nesting, right? Mm. That's her multitasking. Yep. And yet, and still, even though that is the norm to be a mom and a wife, right? Yes. But then, like you said, the husband is still like, well, where do I fit in? Right. Where do I fit in? And I also have heard a lot of the same, the same feelings from men when women just even first have their babies. Yes. Right. In relationships, because when the baby comes now, the baby is the priority Absolutely. and the baby should be the priority yeah. because all of the baby's needs have to be met by both of the parents. Right. right. If not mainly one as far as like breastfeeding, you know, yeah. the man can't do that, even right. though I don't know, they got some new technology. That, but just saying mm -hmm. the baby's a priority. And a lot of times men will feel slighted right. by even their own baby coming home because they feel like they aren't getting that attention. Absolutely. Um, and it's abrupt. Like it's, mm, it's immediate. That's good. Baby, you know, cries. Welcome to the world. That's 24 hour, you know, monitoring of the baby. Mm -hmm. um, and so it is a significant challenge. And I don't know if women are even doing anything to get prepared for that. Mm -mm. I don't know if, you know, moms are talking to daughters about saying, hey, when you have your baby, you got to figure out how to manage your marriage, you know, because mom is consumed as she should be really like we're we're talking on, on both sides of it, really, because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a mom is going to be 100 percent consumed with taking care of the baby. Mm -hmm. And that's natural. That's just what it is. That's that's her natural disposition. That's what she was created to do. That umbilical cord yes. was connected, and that is that is exactly yes. <laughs> that's right. That's so right. so while that baby until that baby is in the crib and safe and not moving, woman is totally one hundred percent occupied with taking care of the baby. Mm. Um, and 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 I'm a father that that wants to do as much as I can. Like uh -huh. I was like even with my daughter. Our daughter's eight years old. <clears throat> and I, I, I want. Hey, let me read to her. Let me, mm -hmm. let me put her in the bed. And my daughter, like, no, get away from me. She, she, like, get, my where mommy. my mama at? <laughs> you know, just a million times I've tried. Like, oh, let me get out of here. Where my mama at? Mm -hmm. She wants mom. Yeah. And so it'll be mom in the bedroom with the daughter, putting the baby to sleep, laying in the bed with her, or whatever. She got older. Me just waiting in the bedroom, mm -hmm. waiting in the bedroom. Got By the it. time mom gets to me, she tired. Mm -hmm. And so luckily, I was able to say to myself. Hey, mama tired. Mm. She really is. Mm -hmm. But I still have needs. And what do I do with my needs? Ah. That's the process. That's what's missing yeah. in what we do in our marriage. That's right. Yeah. That's where that whole maturity comes in. The patience comes in, right? The identifying feelings yeah. comes in so that you can kind of sit with yourself and choose to make the best decision for you and your family, yeah. opposed to being impulsive. And just acting out right on that immediate need to have instant gratification with hoeing, let's oh, just yeah. say, mm -hmm. yeah, with hoeing. Um, and so, no, I, I think that that's really good. So, just like you said, attention, I said, I need attention. So, when did because I know now you've been married, right? And you said, we talked about emotions, because I want to kind of get there. I remember in your book, you said feelings. This was so good. Okay. So when you was in that stage, you said, I didn't even know what feelings were. You said, y'all went to the counselor and the counselor was like, okay, so tell me, Stephen, what are you feeling? And you was like, huh? Right. Like, what's that? You know, Never how are you today? Before. Right. You just describing how you are today. I'm cool. Right. Right. She was but saying, then, how are you feeling? I'm like, I'm oh, hungry. Yeah. And she'd be like, no, how you feeling? I'm like, I'm I just told this woman I'm hungry. Like, what are you talking about? I look at my wife. I just told this woman I was hungry. And she'd be like, no, how do you feel? Mm. I'm like, I didn't sleep well. Mm. Like, no, no, no. How do you feel? Ooh. I'm like, hunger is not a feeling. Ooh, that's so you know, <laughs> like, yeah. like sleep is not, being sleepy is not a feeling. Ooh, that's um, good. And it was never, like, I never, and I'm talking at this time, I'm 25, yeah. you know, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I, I was on the football team. I didn't, mm. I didn't get to, Feel, I didn't get to find out, like I wanted to say, I'm smarter now. Uh -huh. I wanted to say I didn't get to think about feeling. Yeah. But you don't even think about feeling, right? You just feel. Oh. And so I, I, I could never even get to that level. I'd have, to, I'd have to tell myself mm -hmm. it's okay to feel. Oh. And so now tap into, okay, how do you feel? Mm. What do you need? Yeah. What are you unhappy about? Yeah. Um, how can you compromise? How can you sacrifice? Oh, okay, wait, look at the woman and see 
what does the woman need? Mm. You know, what is what is she looking forward to? Mm-hmm. And so I would just try to do those things. And it took me a long time to get there. It took me a very, very, way longer than I thought it should have. No, I got you. And you no need to judge because as long right. as you're here now, right, it's God's timing. Right. right? It was quick. <laughs> God made it straight. Right. There you go. That's right. But no, I, but listen, I, I really want to stay here for one second because there are so many men out there who are like you yeah. feeling. What is that? And even I love how you described even at that time, not now, wifey, right. but at that time when you were doing all of the hoeing, you know, the women were feeling you and they was thinking that y'all were connected because y'all yes. had good sex and because it was fun. And, but you didn't have no, all your feelings were someplace else even yes. back then. I was still hurt. That's right. So, and I love how you first start, because I want to talk about feeling so that the men out there can kind of identify and maybe even ask themselves, have they even identified what feeling even looks like? Yeah, like, you know, how do you even start to get there to identify that? Because I did hear, I know one thing you said you mentioned, and I want you to explain it because you do it so greatly. But you said, um, you said with girls, you said something like the difference between females and males with women and their feelings or their moms or their sisters or their friends. But with men and if they have feelings or they try to go to their guys, like no guy is going to hug you like your friend's not going to hug you. And, right. you know, so, yeah, if you could, because yes. I'm going to mess it all so, up. So, so. When a woman goes through a breakup, her girlfriends immediately know they've been through it too. They immediately reach out and, uh, and they understand how to support. Mm. Um, so it's not just that men won't support. We don't know how to support. Mm. So even if I was in a position where I was going to cry out, mm-hmm. I got to be very careful about who I cry out to. Mm. So now I have to choose between my friends. Which ones do I think are mature? Which ones I think that are going to give me positive feedback? Yeah. Which ones are going to challenge me? Which mm. ones are just going to laugh at me? Mm. You know, and and we, so as we're going through this process of first saying to myself, I'm hurt, mm-hmm. right? Because we, we can't even get there. Like, we don't even know we hurt, right? So we got to go through that. Like, I'm angry. Cool. No, you're not just angry. You're hurt. Come on now. And so then it's a process to get to that point. So once now we figured out we've arrived that we're hurt, mm. what do I do with that hurt? Right. I'm not, I'm not going to go to a counsellor. Right. This is before we started you, talking before about talk it. Was, that's right. Right. Before we started talking a lot, normalizing going mm-hmm, to counseling mm-hmm. in the black community. Mm-hmm. And so even at that point, it still was difficult to share how you felt because we were just learning how to feel. Mm-hmm. I'm still going thinking I'm, I'm in counseling as a 25 year old man telling a woman I'm hungry, mm-hmm. you know, because I didn't eat like that's really I'm in counseling. I'm paying her to help fix a marriage and she says what's going on and i say i'm hungry mm. you, you see how far that is like i gotta come it's just disconnected <laughs> right. it's so disconnected from <laughs> self yeah right I, she can't it's help my here. marriage it's in logic right it's not right. in your heart it's not, i don't even uh, and so i'm not even i haven't aware even started of aware mm-hmm. of me being hurt and so that's how long we got to go through counseling because i got to get through hunger mm. get through sleepy come on get Lord. through being tired yes. all the way to oh okay how do i feel now i gotta really sit down and think because i've never ever thought about how i feel because how i feel has never mattered oh that's so good never please keep going there where, where would our feelings matter okay what about during childhood when you fall and you scrape your knee never and then oh somebody how do you feel Stephen? No. oh yeah no i was raised oh. in a single parent household come on my mama worked like three, four, five jobs or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, if I fell down, I had to get up. Lord have mercy. I had to get the, myself up. The best way you knew how. Yes. And yeah. not bother my mama because she tired. She's getting a little bit of sleep right here. Yeah. And then I move on to playing football. Whereas when you're in football, basketball, you get hurt, you have to get up because mm. there's other men around. So even then, how you doing? We got football players and athletes right now. That, that are hurting, that got a torn ACL, that got some kind of muscle strain, and the coaches are saying, you need to play anyway. Mm. I remember playing football at a young age, and my coach, and I, I got hurt, and my coach actually said to me, he said, are you hurt or are you injured? And I didn't know there was a difference. You know, an injury meant I couldn't play anymore. So, of course, I'm not injured. So I'm, I'm, And it was almost like he's asking me, are you hurt, are you injured? Mm-hmm. And and it was really like prompting me to say, I'm not injured, so I can go back in the game. Lord, have mercy. So that's how I would learn to deal. So the whole time from the age of a, a teenage boy, 13, 14, 15, up to 21, anytime something hurt me, number number one, it was externally. Mm-hmm. No one never asked about me internally. Yeah. 
but it was externally. And so I couldn't deal with my pain externally. I definitely couldn't deal with my pain internally, mm, right? Mm. So now, once I become a, a, I'm not playing football anymore. I'm in my 20s. I get married. Now I have to figure out how to deal with myself internally, mm. which I don't even know because I've never been hurt inside before. Wow. Well, That's or, never, right. never happened. Well, you're not even, you're not aware of it, even if it did happen. It, it, I, I, it never. It would. It, we just, we could just assume <laughs> that it didn't. That happen. it never happened. <laughs> Okay. That I was never ever hurt right. ever. You know, right. when mom did something or whatever, not in I couldn't do it. Or mom said I, I wasn't hurt then. I was angry. Mm, right, that's good. Right, mama said no. You can't go out with that girl to that date to the movie. Everybody going to. I was angry. Oh, socially because it was it's socially acceptable for a little boy to be angry. You can be. You go and go go slam your door, whatever mm. you know. Do whatever but if you, you do. But if you cried, what? Stop being a little girl. Oh, so I don't want to be a little girl. Oh, so nothing has ever hurt externally or internally. Wow. And so that's when I arrived at going to a counselor and saying I'm hungry because ah. I'm not hurt. That was great. <laughs> Please, I hope you get something from that because not only you, so many men hurt. Yes, hurt, but they can't identify the hurt because they hungry. <laughs> right? Are you gonna tell somebody that a client next week? Well, baby, are you hungry? <laughs> and he's gonna be like, Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm hungry. But that's I'm not hurt. That's I'm our buzzword, right? 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 There's right. gonna be a secret word. You have to just tell her. Hey, if you hurt, if you don't want to say it, just say you hungry and I'll know. Like, yeah, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. That's when they'll start doing it. We just, we just, we're really, really far apart. Whereas at the same time, conversely, a woman yeah. throughout her entire life has seen mom cry, mm -hmm. has seen mom love, mm. has seen mom be vulnerable, Ooh, come on. have seen mom be in touch with how she feels and be able to express that mm -hmm. and not be judged, mm. um, but be supported. Yes, that's and right. And so where is that for our community? Yes. Not only, so so again, we're talking about me mm -hmm. not being able to, to say it, come on. but then not having anyone that I would trust if I said it to, and then not having someone that even if I said it to them, would they know what to do with it? Yeah, that's so good. Whereas y'all just knew just to hug each other and love each other. Mm, because because we were brought up to that was a norm in that a was loving a loving environment that's right well that was a even if you didn't have a loving environment that was a societal norm yes. right girls yes. you can cry girls can hug each other girls can have love but boys yes. you be better tough. get yourself together even be um even oh i'm sorry no you go no because one, one story i wanted to tell you Please. like like my son was uh maybe like three or four okay and he fell down and I, I go over to him and I stand over him. Mm. And I'm like, hey, man, you okay? And my wife had saw it. My wife ran from around the corner down the street and slid in like it was home plate <laughs> and got eye level with him and laid on the floor. Come with on him now. And said, baby, are you okay? Mm. And I was like, oh, that's what you're supposed to do? Yeah. Like, you're not supposed to just stand over him and say, hey, son, you are, you all right down there, man? You kind of fell kind of hard. Mama was on the floor, eye contact, looking at the baby with her. Baby, are you okay? Just zoomed in, and and I I was like, oh, she she wrapping the arms around him mm. at an early age, giving that loving caress environment, letting them know it's okay mm. if you're hurt. Yes. You can tell mommy mm. that you're hurt, mm. and and it's just untold men who don't have that opportunity right. to grow in that environment, and 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 through that process, she's also worked on me, mm. saying, Stephen, do not raise our son. How you were raised Come on to now. not really be in touch with how you feel. feel yeah. You know, so my son, he might be the only one in the universe. I don't okay. know. He's not gonna say he's hungry. If he hurt, he's gonna say he's he hurt. He's he gonna say he hurt. <laughs> he gonna say he hurt. <laughs> well, that's a good thing. That's mm -hmm. a good thing. I love that. That's good. That's good. So that's breaking. We are breaking curses here, mm -hmm. generational curses. Mm -hmm. And you spoke about your your father, because that was also another thing. I think that that's a a pivotal point. That's okay. I think that that's a pivotal point. The fact that your father was absent because he was in jail. So then there was no even example to even identify with what a man does when he's hurt or not. So you just kind of got it from wherever you was. And yeah. I love when you said I had to, you didn't say this, but you pretty much did. I, if I fell and if I were, was hurt, I had to figure it out on my own. I was That's the so oldest good. of my two siblings. Okay. And so mom was working two or three jobs. Mm -hmm. I didn't have an opportunity to feel anything. I had to be an adult. I had to take care of the family. Lord. Um, mom was gone. Mm -hmm. At one point, mom was away in college my senior year. And it would be times like 
if I if a kid if my brother lost his lunch money, I'd have to give him mine. Mom's mm. gone. Ain't had Cash App and Venmo and all those things back in the day. We had cash, straight cash, homie. And so um, I would just everything about me from the age of maybe thirteen up was about being a man mm. and being a man and being responsible, sacrificing for others, looking out for others. And there was just never space for me to figure out how I felt about anything. No, I get it. Okay, that leads me to a, a quote in your book. Mm -hmm. You said, um, and this was before, right? I know you're a new man now, but this is a part of your growth. Mm -hmm. You said, accepting unhappiness is a hard thing to swallow. I don't, I don't know that I still know how to do that. Mm. Um, yeah, accepting unhappiness. I've never had to be unhappy. Come on now. Yeah. You already know what I'm about to say. Good, 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 good. Well, you can't hit, hit us with it. Uh, I've never had to accept being unhappy, even if it was for a time, until marriage. Mm. Never. Anything else in life I had control over, or I had, you know, or I can just do something different if I didn't like it. But in marriage, a part of that maturity and that growth is understanding that not so when people say you have ups and downs yes it's not just that you have ups and downs it's how you're going to deal with being down um oh that's good because ups are easy ups are easy come we're on now blast. yeah and, and we're always having ups right and then when you have your first down and how do you what are you going to do about it how do you feel about it what, what's going on we never I, I at least i did and the average man never dealt with being unhappy um from an emotional standpoint of just Let's go pray about it. Let's mm. just let's just sit still. Let's just trust God. Mm. Let's just it's it's crooked now, but it's gonna be straight later. Okay. Like those things, those tools I didn't have. I got you. And so now you said sometimes I don't know how to accept being unhappy, but those are the tools that you use. Now I, I can pray about it. I got you. Now I have that tool. Now I, and I'm I'm still not perfect. At I it. got it's still you. Not, yeah. It's still very difficult because yeah. I still feel like I do as much as I can. Mm. Um, but I also I'm also smarter to know to be able to look at my wife and be like, she does as much as she can. Come on. If now. not more. Yeah. Um, that's good. Hopefully she don't watch. No, no, <laughs> but you don't know no, no. I wanted to watch. That's good because I think it, it also comes down to when we're unhappy, I think in women and men, right? When we're unhappy, I think um, it's kind of like we need to pause and look around us and look at the things that we're grateful for. Yes. Um, because that literally will give you a burst of dopamine and um, of a of, of perspective. Right. So I'm unhappy about this, mm -hmm. but look how much that I have around me that cre can create happiness. Yes. Yeah. Look at how I'm blessed. Look at. And that's a shift right there yeah. because we, we can't, you know, as human beings and as adults, we have to understand that we can't always have everything that we want at every time that we want it. That's just a part of the journey of life. That's a mature. That's a part of maturity and being an adult, like you said. So when I talk about. In my past, I was never unhappy. Well, I was a kid. I That's didn't have right. anything to be unhappy about. Mm. It was just, if I got some Skittles, I'm good. Yeah. Uh, Skittles and a burger, I'm good. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas now we're talking about 401ks and houses and cars and taxes and all kind of things. These are things that I have to deal with or how to be unhappy with. Come on now. Um, and so it's just, it's just maturity. Maybe we shouldn't get married so young. I was so young. I agree. But, and I also think the key to that, I'm, I'll just, I'm going to leave this word with you is acceptance. Mm -hmm. Acceptance is a powerful word mm -hmm. because sometimes we fight what is mm -hmm. when really with the, the good stuff is, is acceptance. The power of accepting what is, mm -hmm. and then you learn how to live around it. Agree. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So before we get out of here, um, you don't need to, you know, I, I really wanted you because, you know, you learned a lot about single women, mm -hmm. even though you're not a, you're a married man. 18 years, October. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And so, um. We're going to go speed round, speed round. What we got? <laughs> well, okay. So if I were just to say to you, um, huh. If you could just remember, you may not remember this because mm -hmm. you wrote this book so long ago, mm -hmm. because there was there were 10 top things mm -hmm. that you said that 
men aren't thinking. So when single women, when you out there and you for men, you know, you're assuming that men are thinking whatever, whatever it is that you want them to be thinking. But you named 10 things. I don't know if you can remember three mm, of them. Mm. It was so long ago. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. What I would say is one of the things I, I always talk to women about is sometimes a lot, most of the times, actually, women focus too much on what the man wants. Ooh. When really the woman knows what she wants. Come on now. And women need to just trust that, that innate thing that God gives them. Um, what I try to tell women is when women say to me, well, what if I don't know if we're in a relationship or not? Well, if you're ready for a relationship and he's not, then that means that you move on. Right. Right. That's what that means. It's simple. Don't be trying to figure it out or trying to convince them or trying to when it, are you gonna be ready for a relationship on Tuesday or December or is it 2025? Like what? Like, don't do it. If you a relationship now, mm. just focus on that. Mm. The next man. Oh, that's so good. Okay, okay. So that's good. That's good. Um, you know, I will say what was so interesting about back then in mm-hmm. the way that you wrote it back then, right? Mm-hmm. And that was just it was just raw through your experience. You know who came up in my mind when I was reading early on? Okay. This is before the change. Mm-hmm. It was a uh, Kevin Samuel. Oh, God rest him. <laughs> God rest his soul. I don't agree with hardly anything he said. I know, but I'm just saying, you know, where you were during those dysfunctional times as a young man, right? It it gave Kevin Samuel. Uh, Yes, it was it was definitely some some chaos when I was hoeing. That's what I'm talking Uh, about. Right, 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 right. Yes, I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. And 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 that's I mean that's the maturity and the growth. Absolutely. Um, But once I grew out of that Kevin Samuel stage, got like I said, God rest his soul. Um, it, it was, what do you want out of life? Mm. What is life? What is valuable? What is it when you look back on life, will you say, um, will you, when I'm, when I'm 70 years old, am I going to look back and say, Whoa, I was with a lot of women. Mm. Will that matter? Mm. Right. Will, it, will right. I remember the woman that I had a one night stand with in Chicago? Mm. D- d- does that, did that add value to my life? Um, or am I going to look back on what I've built with my wife? Mm. Am I going to look back on the successes of my children? You know, am I going to be more concerned about my legacy and things that that those things that matter? So what I will say to men is focus on the things that would matter, like challenge yourself to spend your energy in a way that you are investing in something that will grow, yes. planting seeds that you can water. Mm. Um, collecting women is easy. If you're a man out there and if you just collect the women and lying to them, you're not a player. Let's mm. just start a whole nother player levels to the player game. Mm. You something else. If you got to lie, stop lying. Let a woman choose. Just be man enough to say whatever you got to say and just keep it 100. Keep it 100. If um if if they want to go along for the ride, great. If they don't, keep it moving. And the thing about it was mm-hmm. I would find women who would take it as it is. They just wanted to, maybe they're just having fun too. Yeah. Y'all got to really read the book. You really, really do. <laughs> you can go the book to is a lot of fun. No, it's, it, was, it was so fun. It was so intriguing. I'm mm-hmm. telling you, I was exercising days on days. <laughs> chapter three okay uh-huh. chapter six uh-huh. no it was it was highly entertaining and okay so this this is the two two more questions mm-hmm. okay because we out of here mm-hmm. all right so you said husbands you got a whole chapter husbands mm-hmm. we have to do better right tell these husbands how to do better what what if you could just think of one thing that you um, could just give to them what i or the, the main thing i tell husbands is first just learn who they are mm. and learn like like the greatest tragedy to man is to is to be is to not have witnessed a man love a woman when he was a boy mm. that's the greatest tragedy to man is to not have witnessed a man love a woman when he was a boy so what i mean by that is i have a son mm-hmm. or my son to see me loving a, my wife mm-hmm. his mother so that when he's older, he knows it's okay to love. Because I didn't even know it was okay to love, right? First time I thought I loved the girl, my homeboy's like, man, you love her? No way, I don't love her. No, I'm hungry. No, <laughs> you know? I mean, well, I never knew it was okay. My son will be okay with saying I love this woman oh at the age of 18, 20, 25. He'll be okay with saying, this is what I'm supposed to be doing mm. as a man is loving a woman. So what I will say to husbands is, is love her the way she needs to be loved mm-hmm. and not focusing on the way you want to love. Ooh. We got to figure out how to gap that as a, as a young man. That's what I did. I was like, I, I loved you. I, I gave you love. Mm-hmm. And it was my love, Ooh. which wasn't deep or rich or full. Mm. 
um, it was really just intentional. It wasn't or transactional and not a feeling. Yes, right. Yes. And so um, just figure that part, figure out love, like really, and, and have your partner be a part of how you figure out love. That's right. It's not just yours, especially in marriage. It's ours. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay. This is the last question, mm -hmm. right? So like I said, when I, when I told you, I reached out to you and I sent you those questions, right? To give you the direction of mm -hmm. where we were going to go. And you said to me that I am not the man that I was back then. Right. Mm -hmm. So they want to know, our family want to know, mm -hmm. Steven, can men heal? Absolutely. Um, once they not hungry anymore, um, <laughs> They can definitely <laughs> heal, uh, but you got to take some time. Yeah. It's 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 time consuming. Um, it's all consuming. Mm -hmm. Like you gotta, you have to really want to be better. Oh, you have to want to be great. Yeah, be committed. Yes, I mean, I run into men all the time, and women included, that want to be great doctors, great lawyers, great teachers. Mm -hmm. Do you want to be a great husband? Mm -hmm. Do you want to be a great father? Mm -hmm. Right. Those are the only two things that I worry about. I don't worry about being great at work or like I said, great teacher, great coach, great mentor, great friend. No, great father, yes. great husband. I got him in the wrong order. Let me say it again. Be great husband mm. and great father. Everything else will fall in place. Oh, I love that. Okay. So thank you so much for coming on the podcast and sharing your wisdom mm. with us for real. Um, I, I just, I really, really appreciate you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate your growth. Yeah. So now, how do people find you? Oof. Are you, are you doing any relationship coaching now? Like I need to. Yes. Need to, or men's coaching. Occasionally. You just um, in the house. Depends. You just in the house. I just be. You wasting kids. all this in the house. Hey, uh, I told a guy one time. I don't need to save everybody. I just make sure this one at home work. This one at home is good. <laughs> Um, stephenjamesdixon.com uh, and my Twitter, my Instagram, Facebook, all that, Stephen James Dixon. So I appreciate you having me. Love the show. Yes. Well, thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes. Thank you for being here. My brother, now part of our family. All right, guys. So thank you again for joining me here with my guest. Y'all know my new brother, Steven. Go look him up. Connect to him. Get him back out here in this world. But thank you for joining me again on another episode of Mental Health is a Lifestyle Podcast by Andrea Wise Brown. And guess what, family? I will see you on the next episode. I love you.